Welcome to this instructor notes video following up on the rigging a dog exercise. When you open up the boxer dog model that you download from BlendSwap, it should look just like this. And we're going to take this file and apply a rig to it. So uh, one of the first things I notice is the dog is in the middle of the grid. So I want to place him uh, on the grid as if he's standing on it. So I'm gonna go into a side orthographic view, tab into edit mode, hit A to select all of my vertices, and I'm just going to hit GZ. Again, this is an edit mode to move my dog with his feet flat on the grid floor, this green line. And so by doing it in edit mode, it leaves the object origin at the center of the world here, which is what I want. Okay, so we don't need this camera. I'll go ahead and delete it. And as I go, I might clean the scene of anything else that I don't need. Let's see, I need an outliner panel. So I'll pull that out of the top here and change it to outliner. Whoops. There's outliner there. Okay, we have cube. Let's rename this to be dog model. And it's got a material. I don't really need that. I'll just delete it. Again, trying to clean the scene out of uh, unnecessary things. Also at the bottom, uh, right, I'll pull up another panel for my UV image editor where I can load an image that will guide us as we create the skeleton for our dog. And so if I tab over to my finder, I've downloaded a Creative Commons image that's actually of a wolf skeleton. I couldn't find a good dog skeleton that was a Creative Commons image, but this is the same basic idea. So I'll be able to reference this as I place my bones, which we are ready to do. So in the side view, again, I can access that by hitting three and then five on the number pad. And that gives me my right orthographic. I'm going to hit shift A in object mode and choose armature single bone. And I will rename this object from armature to be called dog underscore rig. And I will leave the object, so its object origin is matching our model right here at the center of the world. And now we're ready to place these bones. So select our dog rig object, tab into edit mode, and then perhaps Z for wireframe. And let's start to move these points. I'm gonna start with the bottom of the spine or the tail end of the spine. And let's take a look at the spine uh, over here in our reference image, where we can see many bones that make up the spine, which gives it its flexibility. But for this simple rig that we're creating, I don't need that many bones. I just need to approximate the general structure, identifying key points of articulation. So I'm going to create one bone to be sort of the hips and then create another bone for the abdomen area. And then another one for the rib cage. And then we'll create three for the neck to give it a little bit more flexibility. And then E to extrude one more, pulling it straight forward in the Y axis to create the head. Okay, now for the tail, I'm gonna grab our original bone, hit Shift D to duplicate it, and uh, use our active element pivot point to rotate that to be the tail. And uh, let's just create two bones here to represent the tail just for that little bit of flexibility. And now all we need to do is create bones for the legs to finish this simple skeleton. So I'll hit Shift D to duplicate that original bone. There's nothing special about duplicating the original bone, but coincidentally, it's just the one I keep picking. And so I'm going to reference our uh, leg bones here, and uh, that makes it easy to distinguish where I should be placing these bones. I think right there, extrude to the back, right there extrude down to the uh, hinge of the foot and then extrude straight forward or no, I won't do straight forward. I'll kind of make it match the angle of the foot like that. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. Now let's duplicate this entire chain with shift D once they're all selected and it will serve as the bones for our front leg. Just placing these real quick. And it seems that this bone in the shoulder actually, or this arm in the shoulder actually has another bone like that, sort of the shoulder blade. Okay, I think that matches pretty well. One thing that's annoying me is the white wireframe um, of our model object. It makes it hard to distinguish where the bones are. We can quickly fix that by jumping into our Blender preferences under themes. And in the 3D view, this wire option right here, instead of white, let's set that to either black or even like a light gray or medium gray like that. 
There we go, it's much easier now to see our skeleton. And so our bone placement looks good from the side, but what about the front? These should all be right in the middle. Yeah, yeah they are. So I'm going to move the front leg over to match the model. Straight up and down looks pretty good, except for the shoulder blade. We'll move that in closer to the spine. And do the same thing over here for the back leg. Maybe move up the first point of our bone chain in the back leg. Move that in X just a little bit, like that. Okay, great. So we've established our skeleton, or at least one half of the skeleton. And so before I move forward with adding some constraints and controls, I do want to name this skeleton properly. And uh, you should have already seen how to do this in the course. So I'm just going to jump ahead with all my bones named. Okay, so now that I've got those bones named, I'm starting to rethink my spine positioning a little bit. Because even though it matches the reference image, putting the spine bones higher on the back, which is correct, leaving room for all the organs underneath it. It's not really gonna work well when we do our automatic weighting. Um, and so I'm going to reposition these bones, breaking the anatomy a little bit, and positioning the bones more in the center of mass for the model. There we go. Not directly in the center, but just a little bit closer. And that way the automatic weights should perform a little bit better for us. Okay, so at this point, we're ready to begin creating the mechanisms for our skeleton, which will be IK constraints for the legs, and then some sort of control for the tail, an IK for the neck, and uh, other relational hierarchy things. Like, for example, right now, if I tab to pose mode with control tab and select our spine bone, or I'm sorry, the original spine bone, and then move that, our spine moves, but our arms don't. So our arms are not parented to the spine appropriately. And so let's try and figure out where those should go. I think that bone right there, parent the uh, shoulder blade bone, uh, shift control clicking on the spine bone, tab to edit mode, control P and keep offset. And now when I rotate that, the shoulder blade goes with it, but looks like this is not parented. Oh, okay, no, it's not. So I need to switch the direction of this bone first. And so selecting it, I'll tab into edit mode, come down to the armature menu, and then choose switch direction or the alt F key. And now parent this bone to the shoulder blade, control P and we'll say connected. And now that should work fine. The whole arm should go with it. I seem to have lost the parenting here. Let's try that again. Keep offset. There we go, that's what I wanted. Now the front leg goes with our spine. I need to do the same for the back leg and the tail. We'll just select those two bones tab into edit mode, shift select our hip bone or the base of the spine, control P and keep offset. Okay, so now we've got some fundamental hierarchy nailed down. And so like on a human, the hips are gonna be like the center of gravity, sort of the root of a lot of movement. And so now let's work on an IK constraint for our leg. Um, this should be repeated material if you've watched the course. So you should already know how to do this pretty well, but um, I will do one leg and then skip or fast forward through the other one, but then I'll show you how to add an IK up here so that the neck behaves very flexibly. But first let's start with this hind leg. Okay, so my standard procedure is to E extrude straight out. This is going to be our IK target. And let's rename this bone just to stay organized. Back leg underscore IK hyphen target. And we don't need the uh, numbers on the back end. And so I'm going to hit Alt P to clear the parent. So now in pose mode, that's just a bone floating off into space. And I'm going to parent my foot bone to that new bone with keep offset and then add an IK constraint to this bone. We'll do that in pose mode over here in the uh, bone constraint menu. Let's add the IK or inverse kinematics and the target. Let's just select this bone here, which actually only selects the dog rig. And so we need to choose back leg IK target. It'll turn yellow showing us that it's now a valid constraint, but I need to change the chain length here to three. Okay, now it extends up to the end of the leg. And let's see how that functions in uh, pose mode by moving this IK target. And you can see that that is the functionality that we're after. All right, pretty standard setup, but I do need a pull target. 
And so I'm going to tab into edit mode, shift D, duplicate that bone for the target, scale it down a little bit, and we'll name this back leg IK pole. Get rid of the numbers. And I will parent this to our IK target as well, keeping that offset. Okay, now back to pose mode, select the bone with our IK constraint, and we can select a pole target now. And that oriented our entire leg awkwardly. So it looks like about 90 degrees is the offset. So for our pole angle, let's try 90. And that's the opposite direction, so maybe negative 90. Let's see from the front, it looks a little bit off kilter. So maybe shift control and then orient it like that. There we go, so about negative 87. Now what happens when we move our leg, let's hide our dog model for now. We move our um, IK target, which essentially is functioning as an entire leg control. We can also move the angle of the knee. Okay, so that is a typical IK setup for a limb. And I will quickly do that for the front leg as well. The only difference being um, we have the shoulder blade bone, which doesn't need to be part of the IK chain. So like this one, we'll make the chain link three. So it extends up to this bone. And then this one will just be free floating for us to manipulate and rotate as we need. So I will jump forward until that is completed. Okay, so the front leg is now rigged appropriately. And we can also move this shoulder blade up. We can rotate it however we want. So that's looking pretty good. Uh, what happens now when we rotate the base of the spine, we should start to see some intuitive automatic movement that's believably dog-like. So you can see that my feet are staying where they are, but the whole body is moving accordingly. Um, oh, but look, we just broke it. So always as a rigger, get in the habit of playing with your rig, trying to break it to discover where the problems are. So the problem here is that our foot bone is being dislocated from the front leg. And the simple way we can solve this is adding a copy locations constraint to this foot bone, making it copy the location of this bone. So I can do this quickly, automatically filling in these constraint fields. If I select the source bone, then shift select the bone that I want to add the constraint to. And here in the pose menu, go to constraints, add with targets and choose location constraint. I'm sorry, copy location. And our foot bone now pops up to the head of our, I guess, ankle bone, we'll call it. And I can make it switch to the tail over here in the constraint by uh, sliding it up to be the tail instead. And now we don't get any painful dislocations, but the functionality is still there. This foot is parented to our target, but it's copying locations of this bone here. Okay, so that's great. We'll have to do the same thing for the back. All right, select first our source where we want to copy locations from, then shift select where we want to copy the locations to, and let's add with pose constraints, add with targets, or shift control C, copy location, and switch the position to be the tail instead of the head. Okay. There we go, that's one problem solved, and we can continue on. Next, we'll address the IK for the head. Now this will be very similar to any limb that we've already done, and that will include, um, instead of extruding here, I'm going to duplicate this bone in edit mode, shift D to duplicate it, and we'll call it head underscore IK dash target. And we'll leave that bone the same size, but then select the head bone, and let's scale that down. Again, I'm doing this in edit mode, not pose mode. Okay, so the same kind of thing, we're going to parent our head bone to the IK target, keep offset. We're going to clear the parent on this IK, Alt P, clear parent, and then tab to pose mode. We're going to add an IK constraint to this bone, change the target, dog rig, and then we're looking for head IK target. And it'll make the chain length, I think three, just like the other ones. Okay, now when we move the IK target, you can see what this functionality will be like. However, we have the same dislocation problem, so we will just do the copy locations constraint. And it's, there we go. Shift control C, copy location, and change it to the tail. There we go, all that works the same as our legs. Pretty intuitive control. However, if I move the hips, that might be a desired effect 
leaving the head stationary. But it's also possible that I will want this um, IK target bone to be parented where the shoulders are parented like this. So we'll just do that and keep it simple uh, for this particular rig. So now the head goes with the rotation of the spine and we can add uh, individual head movement on top of that. Okay, so we've got pretty good movement so far. What else are we forgetting? The tail. Oh, and before I get to the tail, you might have noticed that I did not add a pull target control for our neck IK. And that's because the neck doesn't have a knee. We're not trying to aim the point of articulation in the head, or rather the neck, any particular direction. So this should work out fine the way it is without an IK pull target. But um, that is a difference from um, our limbs that we've rigged up. So I should uh, mention that before moving on to the tail. And let's see, what should we do about the tail? It doesn't need to be a lot of movement. Let's see, I'm going to duplicate this. Uh, well, I need to duplicate it in edit mode. Leave it where it is and we'll scale this bone up and then move it to kind of approximate the general direction that the tail is pointing. And I'm gonna call this tail-ctrl for control. And I'm actually gonna parent this bone to the base of our spine, control P, connected. Oh wait, it was already parented. So yes, this is going to be parented to this bone as it already is, since it's a duplicate. Then we'll take this bone, which is our original tailbone, and I'm gonna parent it to our new control. And uh, we don't want connected, we want to keep the offset. And so now in pose mode, what we'll see is when I rotate this control, the whole tail goes with it. But what I also want to do is some double transforms on this bone here. And so there's a couple ways to do that. Let's first try by copying the rotations of this bone to the rotations of our second tailbone. So we'll select our control first, shift control select the tailbone that we're going to add the constraint to, shift control C, and we'll do copy rotation. Now it lines up exactly where the control bone is at. But if we change local space and local space right here above the influence, let's see if that gives us what we want. Again, I want double transforms, which yes, that is what it's doing. So we're getting double transforms first. We're getting rotations by this bone being a child of this bone, which is parented to our control. And then we're doubling the rotation value by copying the rotations again from this control. And that's why we're getting this sort of wiggling effect. And so that should work out well for a tail control and that will work in all directions, okay? So that's pretty simple. And I believe that that is all the control that we need or all the mechanisms that we need to add, at least for this simple rig. Uh, oh, there is one more thing that I want to add and um, that is for this IK pull target. So it's mainly for an aesthetic or visually helpful mechanism. So right now the uh, IK pull target doesn't really have any visual association with the knee of our leg. And this is true for both of these pull targets. And whenever I mirror these bones to the other side, we're gonna have four IK pull targets. Now, when it comes to animation, we're gonna be moving those all over the place and it's gonna be difficult to immediately distinguish which IK pole target is affecting which bone. And so to ease the annoyance of that, I can create a mechanism here to directly associate it back to this knee. And so what that's gonna look like in edit mode is I'm going to extrude a bone here and then snap it to the head of our pole target bone. And the parenting by default um, is going to be with this bone and that's fine but really the parenting is not gonna be important. Let's just clear the parent. Either clear it or parent it to our pull target by keeping the offset, there we go. Uh, what I wanna do is make this bone stretch in between our knee and the pull target. And so I know I just parented that, but I actually don't think that's gonna work. So let's just clear the parent like I did originally. And um, well, to be honest, I think it should probably be parented to this like I had it originally, albeit uh, disconnected, yeah. Let's just do it that way. Now, the reason for that is I can select this IK pole target, select the stretch bone, which I should rename back leg underscore IK stretch, or specifically the pole stretch. Oh, have an equal sign in there. There we go. And with this particular selection, I can go to pose 
go to the constraints add with targets and choose stretch two. Okay, now wherever I move this IK bone, the IK pull target, that other bone will stretch to it. So there's always gonna be an association between this pull target and the knee that it's controlling. So let's do the same thing up here in edit mode. E to extrude, Alt P to uh, disconnect the bone. And then we'll snap this to the head of our IK pull target. To snap, I'm just hitting G to move and then holding control. And that will snap to points on our bone, especially if we're using a uh, vertex snapping. Well, you have to be using vertex snapping, but that is the default. So once that's snapped, we'll go to pose mode and do the same selection, pull target first, then our stretching bone, shift control C, whoops, shift control C, and choose stretch two. And we'll also rename this bone front leg underscore IK pull stretch. It's very important to stay organized. This is a simple rig and I've already named a bunch of things uniquely. So the more complex a rig gets, of course, um, you need to be uh, organized to compensate for that. All right, so that is, I believe the last thing that I wanna do to this rig. Uh, we're ready to then mirror it to our other side. So I'll save this file, updating it to uh, version number four. And to mirror the bones from the left side to the right side, it's really pretty simple. We'll tab into edit mode on our armature. And with B box select, let's uh, choose every bone on the left side of our animal. And first we need to auto name these bones to have a dot L suffix. And we can do that quickly with the armature menu, um, auto name left and right. And since these bones are visually on the right side of this green line, Blender will automatically name those dot L because technically they're on the left side, the positive X side of our 3D world. And so with that dot L on all of these bone names, go back to the armature menu and choose symmetrize. And now uh, in pose mode, we have all that same functionality for free on the right side. So that is excellent. We now have a full rig that's ready uh, for the model to be parented to. However, in order to do that, we need to be smart about how we parent. Um, note that not all of these bones need to influence the model. For example, our IK pull targets do not need to have any vertex weights on them, but only the initial skeleton that we drew up needs to have uh, vertex weights. And so we need to set those original bones to be deformable, and then all of our other mechanism bones do not need to be deformable. And so by default, I believe the bones are set to deform. Yeah, down here in our bone settings, you have the deform option that's checked on for every bone by default. So this is where organization comes in. I'm gonna select all the bones that don't need to deform. That's gonna be the uh, IK head control. Well, all of our IK control bones. So that's um, these box select so I get on the other side as well. Box select the head, box select the tail control, box select the IK targets. And I think that that's it. All of these do not need to deform. So over here in the deform settings, I'm going to hold the alt key. So it's applied to all my selected bones and deselect deform, rather uncheck it. So now all of these bones should be off deform. Okay, so let's undo until I get my selection back. And I'm gonna add those to another bone layer. So in our armature menu, let's just place those on a layer number two. I can do that in the viewport hitting M to move bone layers and just select layer two right there. Awesome, so now that that is a little more organized, I can have only my controls if I want them or only my deformable bones. Okay, so now when I parent my model to this rig, it will only receive influence from our deformable bones. Let's reveal our dog model and let's see here. So we don't have a mirror modifier on this dog rig, which is unfortunate because we can get some work for free if we do. So let's tab into edit mode on our dog and let's just try to select all of the vertices on uh, the left side, the visual left side here. So with box select, let's select right up until the horizon and delete those vertices. And there we go. I think that that's pretty much symmetrical um, or all the uh, verts on the visual left side. And then let's add a mirror modifier, place that above the subsurf 
and there we go. Just double check to make sure that it looks the same, looks good to me. The reason I wanna do that is the mirror modifier will automatically mirror the bone weights when we parent to the rig. And so without the mirror modifier, we would have to maintain the vertex weights for both sides of the animal. And now we won't have to do that. So let's uh, shift select our rig and control tab to go back to object mode. So we uh, first selected the model, shift select the rig, hit control P and choose armature to form with automatic weights. And now if we go to pose mode on the rig and go to layer number two, where we have our controls, let's see how it works. All right, it's a little bit choppy, but we can see our um, rig is deforming. To take care of the choppiness, it has to do with the order of our modifiers. So if we go to our uh, model here, look at our modifiers. We actually want the armature all the way above, uh, I think mirror, I think that'll be, no, that's not right. I want it after mirror. There we go. So now when I move the rig, it's much more responsive because uh, the armature is not worrying about the um, additional geometry from the subsurface modifier. Instead, the subsurface is smoothing after the armature is being calculated. So that's um, why it was clunky before, and now it's very responsive. And uh, so this rig is in pretty good shape. You can see that the tail there, that's the kind of effect that I was after, more of a, a wagging kind of behavior. So that looks pretty good. Um, really, it does need some additional weight painting, especially down here in the chest. You can see how it's just caving in and that doesn't look very good, doesn't look natural. But I'm not going to do that um, in this lesson. You can see how to do that uh, from the course. And also, I'm not going to show how to set up custom controls, but that is a required criteria for this exercise. I want to make sure that you know how to do that. And so again, I covered that in the uh, course. But um, one thing in particular is I did not have this stretching IK bone as part of the course. So I'll show you quickly how to set up a custom shape for that. And it's extremely simple. So in object mode, let's hit shift A to add a mesh plane and then tab into edit mode, select all of our vertices, hit S, X and scale uh, to zero. Then for simplicity's sake, uh, with everything still selected, um, we'll choose remove doubles. So now we just have one line vertex to vertex and I'll call this WGT for widget and stretch. Okay, so now when I select our stretching IK bones, we can add a custom shape here and choose that widget stretch. I need to also enable wireframe. And now you can see, um, oh, I don't quite have it correct. So I actually need to go back to our object. And since this is covering two grid units, I only need it to cover one grid unit. So I believe it's this vertex. Let's uh, snap it to the increment option, hit GY, control, there we go, now it's snapped there. Yeah, and now you can see what the stretching IK does with a custom shape it's always going to point back to the um, knee that it's influencing. So that's pretty cool. We can do that for these others as well. Very cool. And so um, that's it for the instructor's notes. Everything else to accomplish this dog rig has been explained in the course. So I hope this has helped. I look forward to seeing your submission.